Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Chicago White Sox March to October and uh oops I kind of I kind of haven't posted this since uh the 4th of July. I actually haven't posted it at all since the 4th of July and it's you know that's that's on me. I won't spend too much time talking about it but I don't know. I don't want to say like burnt out or anything. I just kind of for a couple weeks there, I was just kind of like, I don't really want to. But it's weird, because I, I did want to, but I didn't actually make videos. Anyway, we're back now. And I know it's been a long time, obviously, since I posted a video. But also kind of a long time since this series has been regular this March to October, which is weird, because we're so close to the end. But obviously, the last one I posted, that was 4th of July. But then the last one I posted before that was like two weeks before that. So we've only gotten like one new March to October video within the last like month and a half almost. But we're looking to get back on track here. We're, we're going to get back to the consistency. And we are very close to the end here in this one because we're in the World Series. So hopefully it won't be much more than four or five more episodes if we can sweep or take this series in early fashion. But also, real quick, before we get into the stuff on this video, there's a couple of things I want to bring up. First of all, um, in the in the vein of getting back to consistency, I have a pack opening that's going up later today. And if you see that, uh, it was recorded a long time ago, like probably early July, and I just never like posted it for some reason. So that's going up later today. And also, I just want to remind you guys that once this March to October is over, which like I said, should hopefully be only like five-ish more episodes, we're taking this White Sox team into a franchise mode. So no matter how this ends, if we end up winning this World Series or not, we're, we're moving, we're transitioning this into a franchise mode and hopefully playing at least a year, hopefully more, into the future of this White Sox team. But then the other big thing is pretty much throughout this entire postseason in these videos here, I've been asking you guys for your input because I want to do another March to October after this one's over. And that would be in addition to this one becoming a franchise mode. But I've been asking for your guys' input in the comments on what teams you'd like to see. A lot of people have been saying a lot of different teams, but I've narrowed it down to about, I guess, six teams? So we had a lot of teams suggested, but yeah, I've narrowed it down to six teams that I'm most interested in. I'm not sure how I want to decide from here on out, but for this video and this video maybe alone, I don't know. Let me know which of these six teams you want to see the most. So those teams are, we've got the Brewers. That one really wasn't suggested much, but it's obviously a team I'm interested in because they're like neck and neck with the White Sox in terms of my favorite team. And I did, I did their March October last year which is part of the reason why I might not want to do it this year, but also because of how much the Brewers have changed. That's why I am interested in doing it again. Another team I'm interested in is the Texas Rangers. This one, I only remember one person commenting about it, but I never really considered the Rangers. And uh, they are a really interesting team. Like They seem to be really close to having a lot of pieces that you would need, but especially in that division, they still seem pretty far away. So it'd be cool to uh, to give it a try with them. And also because I think it was last year in MLB 19, I was going to do a franchise mode of the Rangers. And I even posted the first episode of it. And then I just like lost interest and didn't want to do it anymore. So it'd be kind of cool to um, do the Rangers and kind of rectify that uh, failed <laughs> franchise mode attempt with them. Another team that actually I really don't have a ton of interest in playing, but I, I remember a lot of comments telling me to do the Mets. So they're another interesting team, uh, a pretty loaded NL East, and none of the teams, at least in my opinion, are like super standout. I mean, the Braves might be might be a little better. I mean, obviously, you've also got the defending World Series champions, but they lost uh, Anthony Rendon and and I feel like they lost someone else pretty big, but I can't remember right now. But anyway, the Mets are another option. Another one that I remember seeing a couple people commenting was the Toronto Blue Jays. They're pretty similar to this White Sox one, actually, with a lot of young guys, a lot of prospects coming up. So those four are really the ones that, well, I guess the three, because the Brewers weren't suggested too much. But of those four, those were like some more legit teams that could have a feasible chance now these last two are kind of three but it's really only two different options 
I could see it being fun to uh, take what is probably the worst team and uh, use them in a March to October and just see what I can do on Legend difficulty. If I can make it to the playoffs, you know, who knows what could happen from there. So I wanted to get an option from each league, the National League and the American League, because the other four options, there was two of each. So I wanted to kind of keep it even. But in the American League, I still think the Orioles are probably the worst team. I mean, you got the you got the Royals and the Tigers really trying to take that from them. But I still think the Orioles are probably the worst team. So, you know, if you want to see the Orioles, let me know and I, I give that a try. And then in the National League, this is kind of why I said it's kind of two or three options. But I just couldn't decide which team is worse in the National League between the Marlins and the Giants. But yeah, those are the options. So let me know. Let me know which one of those you think is most interesting to do a March to October from. So now with all that in mind, we can finally get into this actual video here. Man, with all that rambling at the beginning, this could end up being a long one, but we have the Dodgers to take down in the World Series. But before we hop in to the matchup, I want to do a little bit of scouting, you know, take a glance at what the Dodgers are looking like. So I'm pretty sure... And I'll check again right here. But in terms of record, the Dodgers are going to be the worst team that we're playing against in this entire postseason run. We faced the Astros first, who had 96 wins. Then we took down the Yankees, who had the most wins in the entire league at 103. We were at 101. I think the Dodgers, yeah, they're at 94. So still a good record. Don't get me wrong. But if you look at it that way, they could be the worst team we're facing up against. And honestly, if you think about it, in that division, they could probably get a few more wins, but you know, they're, they're still ranked second in terms of all that stuff in the top right. First in speed, first in defense, fir first in pitching. I thought the Yankees were first in pitching. So now let's see why they're actually ranked that high and everything. Let's take a look at their lineup. It's probably pretty similar to what we recognize. They got Justin Turner. He's cold though right now. They're using Chris Taylor in center field. They got Mookie playing second. That's interesting. They got Bellinger in right. Peterson and left, Corey Seager, Muncy, AJ Pollock. I guess, yeah, I guess he will be DHing when we play at home. Most of these hitters don't seem to be having a crazy good postseason besides Cody Bellinger here with his five home runs and 15 RBI with a 366 average. There's a couple other guys with a higher average, like Betts at 362. Uh, and then we got AJ Pollock at 391. I don't want to dive too deep into their stats, but, you know, that's just surface level. We're also going to have to be aware of their pitching, though. It said they were ranked number one, and uh, it probably makes sense, especially with these top two guys in the rotation, Walker Bueller and Clayton Kershaw. Bueller's a 93 now, and yeah, he's he's going to be he's going to be probably a little tough to hit on legend difficulty here. We also got Kershaw, who's still an absolute tank. He's 93 also, but he's happy right now, so he's going up to a 95. Uh, the back three in the rotation. Not as good, but definitely not bad either. Honestly, they're probably as good as our best pitchers. Their bullpen's pretty solid too, especially, uh, especially well, I don't know. I, I don't want to say that they're really good, but a lot of solid guys. I mean, Jansen's probably still going to be tough to hit. Other than that, nobody too crazy, but, you know, it's, it's a bullpen. So now that I've already spent about 15 minutes of my time, I don't know how much that will translate to of the actual video, but... This is going to be a longer one, but now that we've spent all this time going over things before actually playing, it's time to play. We're hopping in to World Series Game 1 in the top of the 5th with already a one to nothing lead. So let's see how this pans out. So let's check in with our field reporter, Heidi Watney, who spoke earlier with some players from both sides about what it means for them to be playing in the World Series. Heidi? Matt, playing in the World Series is every player's dream, and just about everyone I talked to echoed that sentiment. One guy told me, I almost can't believe I'm here. I've worked my whole life to get to this moment, but I wasn't sure it would actually happen. Well, it is happening, but a formidable opponent stands in their way, not to mention the nerves and pressure that comes with playing on the sport's biggest stage. All right, so here we go. I'm pretty surprised to see Giolito on the mound because he pitched in Game 5 of the ALCS and uh, I guess we must have had enough time in between the end of that series and the beginning of this one because he's taking them out he's actually throwing a no-hitter he's actually throwing is he throwing a perfect game he might have a walk I have to check 
Yeah, no, Giolito's got a perfect game going through four. It's only four, so it's not like, you know, it's not like anything super crazy, but it's a start. So it's a start that we're probably going to blow on, like, the first pitch. Actually, no, we do have an error. I didn't, I don't know how I didn't notice that. So it's not a perfect game. It's just a no-hitter. And it looks like our only run came from, I'm assuming, in the first inning, Tim Anderson hit a leadoff double, and then with two outs, Edwin hit an RBI double. And those are the only two hits of the game and the only run of the game to this point. Southsiders rejoice. The Chicago White Sox are back in the World Series. What a fantastic feeling for a franchise that had to endure some recent lean years. Uh, you said it, Matty. To go from seven straight losing seasons to a World Series appearance, it's just unbelievable. Dero, what a terrific job these White Sox have done all season long. This is just the second time in the last 60 years that this franchise has made it this far. And the last time they won it all and brought the trophy home. Alright, well there's a broken bat pop-up. I'm not sure how much I'm going to leave in of the announcers talking. But I might leave it all in because it was pretty cool. They're talking about how the White Sox, um, we've you know made the World Series obviously. Gone from seven straight losing seasons to a World Series appearance. And, you know, they couldn't hit the nail more on the head with uh, the White Sox recent struggles. As you probably know, if you're a White Sox fan, it's been since 2008 since the White Sox have even appeared in the playoffs. And there goes the no hitter. It only took one extra batter than I thought. All right. Well, at least at least there's no more added pressure of trying to keep that going. Now we can just pitch our normal game. Man, and now I'm walking Muncie, so immediately we're getting into trouble. A double play would be gigantic, though. If we can turn that in, dude, this discipline. I played in the ESL tournament yesterday, and I played against three really good people before I got eliminated. And this feels like pitching to them with just insane play discipline. Oh my god. They're not swinging at anything out of the zone nothing i'm trying i'm making pitches in the dirt to try and get him swinging for strike three in there oh and now it's a oh wait he actually swung okay we got bailed out there i'm about to walk the bases loaded after getting bailed out in the last at bat okay we got a three two count two outs we're gonna try this circle change here and danny's there we kind of got lucky that inning with that swing and an obvious ball through or ball four two at bats ago and then absolutely hanging a circle change we gotta put on some runs because i'm not feeling confident in my pitching right now and our discipline's kicking in too drawing a walk in the first at bat against walker Bueller here that could be pretty big and next up we got luis robert and that reminds me man the white Sox they've played three games so far this season at the time i'm recording this it's so exciting to watch them, even though they lost two games and the pitching is not looking good at all. But there are some flashes to be excited about, especially from this guy. And... Oh my god, what a... No, no, stay a second, stay a second. I almost sent him, but yeah, it's Bellinger out there. Justin Turner, that was a very rough play for him. That went from probably being a double play... So now we have two runners on and nobody out with Grandal up. We have to capitalize on that. Oh, that would have been ball four, but it's still going to do the same thing anyway. So I guess it doesn't matter. Danny, that's not going to do anything. I know he's got a weaker arm out there in center. I guess I might have made it with that throw being offline, but base is loaded. Only one out now. No reason to risk anything. Oh, what a pitch. Man, that really fooled me. And now, now we're going to have to get a base hit here in order to cash in. We do have Yuan Mankata up, who's been one of the better players in the postseason for us. Mankata, and it's leaving. Yuan Mankata. Oh, I thought this inning was over when he went down 0-2, but he manages... To go with the fastball low and away. Hit it to the opposite field for a 428 foot grand slam. And that is giving us a pretty comfortable lead now at 5 to nothing. 
And Turner tried to turn on it, but Eloy's gonna camp under it just before the warning track, so we're good. And the strikeout on the slider. That was kind of lucky. I left a fastball right down the middle of the pitch before that he destroyed foul. And Mookie. He's not going to let this inning die. First pitch swinging on the fastball away. He's going to get to second on that one. Oh, please get there, Eloy. That ball was smacked. Man, that was just hitting the wrong spot. But Bellinger almost made us pay for giving up that two-out double. Now, this is this is tough for me to do, but it's the World Series. You can't. You got to stop things before they start. And Giolito, even though he's only given up two hits, he was giving up some hard contact in that last inning, especially at the end there. So with three lefties in a row, I'm turning to the pen. Jace Fry is coming into this game to try and uh, try and limit the abilities of the three lefties here. He's pitched in three games, two and two thirds innings, no runs allowed so far in the postseason. Oh, and we get him looking at the changeup loan away. I kind of missed my spot, but it worked out better. And that one, Jose, let's get past him. I thought that was a play that definitely could have been made. And Jose immediately on the next pitch, redeeming himself by getting the double play started. Jace Fry mows down the, that half of the inning. Six pitches it took to get through three batters. Huh, okay. It didn't even register for a second that that was strike three. I don't know why Ross Stripling is giving me so much trouble, but if he only throws his four seam and his knuckle curve, I'm that's all he needs for me right now. And that, man, that barely counts. <laughs> I was not on that knuckle curve either, but Danny Mendick doing what Danny Mendick does and muscles that one over the first baseman are kind of next to the first baseman because I think he got up high enough. He's just off to the side. Tim Anderson? Did he capitalize? Oh, he did. Tim Anderson capitalizing on the weak little Danny Mendick hit. That is exactly what this offense needs to do. If we're going to be given anything, we got to take it forcefully. And now Tim Anderson with his second double of the game, driving in another run. Putting this one even further out of reach. And we're going to go ahead and call it a day for uh, Jace Fry out there. He tossed two good innings. We don't want to leave him in too long. Still want to keep him rested if we need to see him again. So Joe Kelly coming into this game to try and get the last three outs with a six-run lead. So I think he should be able to do it. All right, and right on cue, <laughs> we're giving up a leadoff home run. All right, there we go. Bounce back pitch there. The change up low. And there it is. Jack Peterson swinging at the two seam away. And we wrap up the first game of the World Series. Of course, they couldn't just let us keep the shutout. So that game pretty much ended up being decided by one swing. And that was the Yohan Mankata Grand Slam. That was almost gifted to us on a silver platter after a walk. And Justin Turner's error when he could have turned two. But we take game one. That's a big first uh, first step to get there. Going up 1-0 in a series. Obviously is a lot better than going down 0-1. So it looks like we're going to be going into the next game of the series. Tied at nothing in the top of the sixth. But that is going to be where I wrap up this episode. We're going to take it one game at a time. Make sure to remember to let me know in those comments which of those teams I mentioned at the beginning of this video you would like to see as my next March to October team. And also be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to see the rest of this March to October series and the next one I do based on the teams you let me know you want to see. But with that being said, that's all I've got for you guys in this one. I hope you all enjoyed. I'm hoping to be back consistently now, but we'll see. But I'll see all you guys in the next one.